Welcome to the Debridement of Ulcers and Wounds webcast for Palmetto GBA Jurisdiction J11. My name is Carrie Weiss and I am a Senior Provider Education Consultant in the Provider Outreach and Education Department. Joining me today are several colleagues from the J11 Provider Outreach and Education Department. Before I get started, I would like to share a few housekeeping items related to the ON24 webcast platform. A copy of today's PowerPoint is available through the resource widget. From the resource widget, you may print the slides if you choose. You can control the volume of today's webcast. The sound quality is determined by your computer speakers and or headset. Please take a moment to adjust the sound volume if necessary. I will ask that you hold your questions until the end of the presentation. There will be a question and answer period at the end of the webcast where I will address questions related to today's presentation. Holding your questions until the end allows you to focus on the material currently being presented and will allow me to read the submitted questions out loud so that everyone can hear the question and the answer. A certificate of attendance is also provided under the resource widget. You may print the certificate as proof of attendance. I will provide a Palmetto GBA course number at the end of the session. Palmetto GBA does not offer CEUs, however, many associations and organizations may accept a copy of the PowerPoint and the certificate of attendance for full or partial credit towards satisfying their CEU requirements. Reminder, the Palmetto GBA course number is not an index number. For those of you that are affiliated with the AAPC, they do not require an index number for webcasts presented by a Medicare administrative contractor. Lastly, at the end of the presentation, we will ask you complete a short survey to assist us with evaluating and improving future educational events. As I mentioned earlier, you can assess access and print the PowerPoint and certificate. These items are available under the resource widget. Widgets are similar to portals that allow you to access different areas of ON24 platform. The list of the available widgets is listed at the bottom of your screen. Once the resource widget is open, you may use the maximize and minimize bars located on the top right corner of the resource list to expand or shrink that information. Don't worry if you accidentally close a widget, you can easily go back and reopen it in the same way you initially did by clicking on the desired widget at the bottom of the screen. Additionally, there, will, there may be times when you want to minimize or maximize one screen to view another. The same functionality works with the minimize and maximize bar. As a reminder, the information provided in this presentation was current as of January 22, 2014. Updates to material in the presentation subsequent to January 22 will be provided through normal communication channels, which include the Palmetto GBA Jurisdiction J11 webcast, excuse me, website and the listserv message process. Note that the CPT codes and descriptions are copyright 2013, American Medical Association, all, right, all rights reserved, CPT is a registered trademark of the American Medical Association, or AMA. Today's webcast, will re we will review Palmetto GBA's Local Coverage Determination, or LCD, for debridement of ulcers and wounds, L31705. This includes coverage which entails indications, limitations, medical necessity, documentation requirements, utilization guidelines, current medical review findings that are related to these services, and as always, I will conclude today's webcast with resources to assist you after this session. The following CPT codes are associated with this policy. You would need to refer to your CPT code book for a more detailed description. For the purpose of reimbursement by Palmetto GBA, a debridement is defined as the removal of foreign material and or devitalized or contaminated tissue from an adjacent 
to a traumatic or infected wound until surrounding healthy tissue is exposed. Our local coverage determination, or LCD, debridement of ulcers and wounds applies to debridement of localized areas such as wounds and ulcers, but it does not apply to the removal of extensive eczematous or infected skin. Debridement is indicated whenever necrotic tissue is present on an open wound. Debridement may also be indicated in cases of abnormal wound healing or repair. Debridement techniques usually progress from non-selective to selective, but can be combined. Debridement will not be considered a reasonable and necessary procedure for wounds that are clean and free of necrotic tissue. Debridement is used in the management and treatment of wounds or ulcers of the skin and underlying tissue. Providers should select a debridement method most appropriate to the type of the wound, the amount of devitalized tissue, and the condition of the patient, the setting, and the provider's experience. Selective debridement refers to the removal of specific targeted areas of devitalized or necrotic tissue from a wound along the, mar the margin of viable tissue. Occasional bleeding and pain may occur. Selective debridement includes selective removal of necrotic tissue by a sharp dissection, including scissors, scalpel, and forceps, and selective removal of necrotic tissue by high-pressure water jet. Selective debridement should only be done under the specific order of a physician. The routine application of a topical or local anesthetic does not elevate active wound care management to surgical debridement. Local infiltration, metacarpal or digital block, or topical anesthesia are included in the reimbursement for debridement services and are not separately payable. Anesthesia administered by or incident to the provider performing the debridement pr procedure is not separately payable. Pal G Palmetto GBA does not consider the following services to be debridement. Removal of necrotic tissue by cleansing, scraping, other than by a scalpel or curette, chemical application and wet to dry dressing, washing bacterial fungal debris from lesions, removal of secretions and coagulation serum from normal skin surrounding an ulcer, dressing of small or superficial lesions, trimming of callus or fibrinous material from the margin of an ulcer, pairing or cutting of corns or non-planar calluses, skin breakdown under dorsal corn that begins to heal when the corn is removed and shoe pressure eliminated is not considered an ulcer and does not require debridement unless there is an extension into the subcutaneous tissue. Incision and drainage of abscess including paronychia, trimming or debridement of mycotic nails, avulsion of nail plates, acne surgery, destruction of warts, or burn debridement. Providers should report these procedures when they are present Rep, excuse me, represent covered, reasonable, and necessary service using the appropriate CPT code or Hicks Fix code. The LCD contains a list of ICD-9 codes that may support medical necessity. Use of these codes does not guarantee reimbursement. The patient's medical record must contain documentation to support coverage criteria and the policy has been met. The provider must document the medical necessity of services performed for each date of service submitted on a claim, and documentation must be available to Palmetto GBA on request. The patient's medical record must indicate in the progress notes or procedure notes a detailed description of the procedure and the method used, the size, depth or grade, and appearance of the ulcer wound as the type of tissue or material removed. When billing CPT codes 11042 through 11047, the provider must document the medical necessity of the services performed for each date of service submitted on a claim, 
and documentation must be available to Palmetto GBA on request. The tool used for debridement, such as a curette, scalpel, or other instruments. Frequency of surgical debridement. Measurement of total devitalized tissue, so the wound surface, before and after surgical debridement. Area and depth of devitalized tissue actually removed from the wound, not just the depth of the wound. Blood loss and description of tissue removed. Detailed description of the procedure. Evidence of the progress of the wound's response to the treatment. This doc documentation must also include a minimum of current wound volume, volume, so the service dimension and depth presence and extent of or absence of obvious signs of infection, presence and extent of or absence of necrotic, devitalized, or non-viable tissue, and other material in the wound that is expected to inhibit, inhibit healing or promote adjacent tissue breakdown. Documentation for debridement exceeding utilization guidelines must include a complete description of the wound progress towards healing, complications that have delayed healing, and a projected number of additional treatments necessary. Active debridement performed by a physical therapist must be performed under a treatment plan as any other physical therapy service outlining specific goals, duration, frequency, modalities, an anticipated endpoint, and other pertinent factors as they may apply. Departure from this plan must be documented. When hydrotherapy is billed by a physical therapist with CPT codes 97597 or 97598, the documentation must reflect that the skill set of the physical therapist was required to perform the service in the given situation. Services performed except in excessive frequency are not medically necessary. Frequency is considered excessive when services are performed more frequently than generally accepted by peers, and the reason for the additional services is not justified in the documentation. Debridement services are not expected to be medically necessary more frequently than once a week. The rationale and medical necessity for more frequent services must be clearly documented in the medical record. If the debridement of chronic ulcers requires more than eight services to promote healing, the rationale and medical necessity must be clearly documented in the medical record. Palmetto GBA performed service-specific prepayment target medical review on Part B claims for CPT codes 11042 through 11047 for surgical debridement services provided in an outpatient hospital setting, so place of service 22, in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia. The review period was July 1st, 2013 through September 30th of 2013. This review is based on data analysis that identified providers billing for surgical debridement services in a non-surgical place of service. At this time, I will provide you with the results for each state. The first state will be North Carolina. A total of 577 claim lines were reviewed with 304 either completely or partially denied, resulting in a claim denial rate of 52.7%. The total charges reviewed were $42,036.14, out of which $21,289.35 was denied resulting in a charge denial rate of 50.6%. The top three denial reasons identified were per applicable LCD, payer deems information submitted does not support medical necessity of services billed. That was at 44.8%. The second top reason would be no or partial documentation received at 39.3%, and the third 
top reason for denial was inconsistent information, wrong patient or wrong date of service at 4.8%. Now, starting on slide 28, we have provided a detailed list of granular errors that are associated with that previous slide, so slide 27. So here are the specific granular errors. For denial code that not medically necessary, there was no documentation of the wound post-debridement size and depth noted, pre-debridement uh, pre wound volume noted, there was no presence with extent or absence of obvious signs or infection noted. There was no pre-debridement appearance noted. There was no presence with extent or absence of necrotic devitalized or non-viable tissue noted. Um, there was no level of tissue removed to support the CPT code build. This continues on the next slide for medical necessity. There was no surgical debridement noted. No presence of foreign or other material in the wound that could inhibit healing or promote adjacent tissue breakdown noted, and there was no complicating factors for the prolonged and repetitive debridement noted. The documentation received did not support the procedure code build and or the additional or part thereof of the 20 square centimeters. The diagnosis listed on the code was not supported in the LCD. And for denial code with the wrong beneficiary or wrong date of service, the documentation um, was missing the correct date of service. The second state we will discuss will be South Carolina. A total of 543 claimed uh, lines were reviewed, with 231 either completely or partially denied, resulting in a claim denial rate of 42.5%. The total charges reviewed were $35,000 and, excuse me, $35,000 and $36.22, out of which $16,089.79 was denied, resulting in a charge denial rate of 45.9%. The top three denial reasons identified were uh, not medically necessary at 54.3%, number one. Number two, no or partial documentation received at 31.2%, and inconsistent wrong patient or wrong data service at 6.0%. Now again, starting on slide 32, we will provide you a detailed list of granular, granular errors associated with that previous slide, so slide 31. Now you're gonna see kind of a pattern here. It's, similar denial reasons. Um, there was no documentation of wound, post debridement size and depth noted, no pre-debridement pre, uh, wound volume noted, no presence with extent or absence of obvious signs or infection noted, no removal of dead or unhealthy tissue using sharp instrument noted, no presence with extent or absence of necrotic, devitalized or non-viable tissue noted, no level of tissue removed to support the CPT code build. And again, continuing with medical necessity denial would be no surgical debridement noted, no presence of foreign or other material in the wound that could inhibit healing or promote adjacent tissue breakdown noted, no complicating factors for the prolonged and repetitive debridement noted, no pre-debridement necrotic material present in the wound noted, and post debridement wound appearance, no pre, post debridement wound appearance noted. Um, documentation received did not support the procedure code build, and again, um, no documentation to support that additional or part thereof, the 20 square centimeters. Um, also, there was no diagnosis listed on the claim that supported an LCD. A denial for the wrong beneficiary data service was related to um, it was missing the correct data service and the beneficiary's name. The third state we will review will be Virginia. A total of 539 claim denials were reviewed with 258 either completely or partially denied resulting in a claim line denial rate of 47.9%. The total charges reviewed were $41,179.64, out of which 
$20,948.81 was denied, resulting in a charge denial rate of 50.9%. And the top three denial reasons identified were, and again, this shouldn't be a surprise, it's, they're all consistent, um, just a different percentage. The first one was medical necessity at 61.3%. The second one was no or partial documentation received at 33.0%. And then the final, the third top denial reason was a wrong patient or wrong date of service at 2.7%. Now the granular errors, so the, the uh, specific reasons for these denials, um, starting on slide 37, um, we will go through those, and again, they're related to slide 36. Um, for the me not medically necessary, there was no documentation of the wound post debridement size and depth noted, no pre uh, debridement wound volume noted, no removal of dead or unhealthy tissue using a sharp instrument noted, no presence with extent or absence of necrotic devitalized or non viable tissue noted, no level of tissue removed to support. Um, the CPT code build, uh, surgical debridement, no surgical debridement noted, and again, continuing with our medical necessity, there was no presence of foreign or other material in the wound that could inhibit healing or promote adjacent tissue breakdown noted, no complicating factors for the prolonged and repetitive debridement noted, no pre-debridement necrotic material present in the wound noted, and no post-debridement wound appearance noted. The documentation received did not support the procedure code build or the additional or part thereof the 20 square centimeters. And yet again, um, the diagnosis listed on the claim was not supported by the LCD. And then for the wrong beneficiary, but wrong data service, um, basically both of those were missing. So there was um, the data service um, and the beneficiary's name. The fourth and final state we will discuss will be West Virginia. A total of 510 claim lines were reviewed with 217 either completely or partially denied, resulting in a claim denial rate of 42.6%. The total charges reviewed were $41,257.72, out of which $17,962.30 was denied resulting in a charge denial rate of 43.5%. And the top three denial um, rates were the same as the other three, except there was a change with the percentage, um, medical necessity at 55.3%, no or partial documentation received at 20.7%, and the final was the um, inconsistent information, wrong patient or wrong data service, at 7.9%. Again, we'll provide you with some granular errors. So starting on slide 42, we'll be referring back to those findings from slide 41. And again, it starts with medical necessity. And again, you can see this is just, um, it continues with the same issues uh, that the other, the other states have had. So I won't read through all of those. Um, just so you know that they are um, pretty much the same, um, so you will have that as a resource. And it continues, as you can see, no documentation to support, um, received to support the procedure code. Um, the ICD-9 codes that um, are listed in our policy. And then again, it was missing um, the correct data service and the beneficiary's name. Well, we, at this time, we'd like to take a moment to provide you with some tips for preventing the granular errors associated with the debridement of ulcers and wounds. So in, ensure that all documentation to support medical necessity of the service build is submitted for the review. Please refer to that LCD, that 31705, and we have an article on our website that title is Surgical Debridement Services Performed in an Outpatient Hospital Setting Place of Service 22, Service Specific Targeted Medical Review Notice for Documentation Requirements. 
Now, so we include not only in our LCD, but in, within this article, the documentation requirements. Not only that, you have that now in your PowerPoint presentation in front of you. Verify all documentation was included in the additional documentation request that is referred to as an ADR. Include any additional information pertinent to that data service requested to support the services build. So you may want to submit um, any original chart notes, um, you know, that may be from a, a previous data service, diagnostic tests, radiological tests, laboratory tests. And we also recommend submitting documentation related to the service build within 30 days of the date of that additional documentation request. Review all documentation prior to submission to ensure the correct patient and the date of service um, was on that medical record. This also includes legibility because sometimes we receive documentation where we can't identify if that truly is the beneficiary or, beneficiary or the correct data service. Verify the following documentation requirements have been met. The tool used for debridement, the, call, the curette, scalpel, other instrument, instruments, frequency of surgical debridement, measurement of total divitalized tissue, wound service, Surface before and after surgical debridement, area and depth of divitalized tissue actually removed from the, the wound, not just the depth of the wound, blood loss and description of the tissue re removed, progress notes or procedure notes with detailed description of the procedure, evidence of the pr progress of the wound's response to treatment, this documentation must include at the minimum the current wound volume, presence and extent of or absence of obvious signs of infection, presence and extent of or absence of necrotic, devitalized, or non-viable tissue, and other material in the wound that is expected to inhibit healing and promote um, or promote adjacent tissue breakdown. And as you can see, that was just a reminder from when we discussed the documentation requirements. The service-specific review for CPT codes 1 1042 through 11047 will, con will be continued in all states based on a moderate charge denial rates and medium impact severity errors. Palmetto GBA will continue to monitor these services via data analysis and referrals. Now, if there is a significant billing aberrancy that is identified, a provider specific review may be initiated. So, hopefully, everybody understands a service specific review is related to a specific service, so a CPT code, HCPCS code, DRG, where provider-specific review is specific to a provider's NPI number. So if they identify within the service-specific um, uh, review or through data analysis that a provider has um, consistently high charge denial rate, um, they can proceed or move that provider over to a provider-specific review. We've provided you with some valuable resources. Um, the first one would be your Palmetto GBA link, um, and you'll see at the end of that link we have your J11 Part B. There are some specific areas that may be very beneficial um, with pertaining to this specific topic. The first one would be browse by topic. So the review that I just discussed, the service specific review, um, they do have that listed under probe reviews. So you would go to browse by topic and then you would locate probe reviews. Um, there's a modifier lookup tool because you may have some questions regarding 59s or ENMs on the same day, et cetera, and um, appending the 25 modifier. Um, medical policies. Uh, that would have your LCDs, so your local coverage determinations, and your NCDs, your national coverage determinations. Um, the one that you really want to pay attention to is your LCD by your state, so whether it's North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, or West Virginia, and we have our policy located out there. Um, again, it's debridement of ulcer and wounds, L31705. We also have under that um, header of medical policies where if you have any questions or concerns related to that policy, um, as in you want to 
provide some additional information to maybe change the policy, add to the policy. Um, you can provide supporting documentation and contact our um, medical policy uh, specialist. You always should have a current CPT code book because as you know, um, those CPT codes related to ulcers and wounds had changed in the past, so it's always important to keep up um, and have a current CPT code book. Um, at this time, we're going to open it up to questions and answers. Um, but before I do, I'd like to take a moment to um, provide you with the Palmetto GBA course number, and that is 930707. Um, and how we will proceed, if you'd like to ask a question, um, you can do so by entering the Q&A. Um, I will need a minute to compile or look at the questions, and then I will retrieve some of the questions and um, read them aloud and answer those. Um, I also want to remind everybody about social networking. We are, um, you can stay connected via the YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter. So please take advantage of that. And um, please don't forget to um, complete our survey. Um, but at this time, we will open it up to Q&A, so if you could please, um, if you have any questions, please enter that into your Q&A, and we will address those. Again, please, it will take me a minute. I need to um, go through the questions, and we will address those. Here is a question. Um, if we need to bill for multiple add-on codes, for example, a 11045 due to having an additional 60 square centimeters to debride, does each additional add-on code need to be billed on a separate line with a 76 modifier on the second line, or bill one with uh, 11045 with two units? From my understanding, you would bill 11045 with two units, so a quantity billed of two. Um, I have the question, please provide an example of a frequency statement. Um, it wouldn't be so much just a statement um, as in, um, well, I guess you could say it, uh, call it a statement, but the provider would just be explaining why they felt it's necessary, and this isn't this isn't a generic statement. It's specific to the, the patient and their circumstances. So um, the provider would just need to clearly identify why they need to do it, A, either more frequently, so the debridement either more frequently, or beyond um, that limited amount of time to proceed with uh, the debridement. So it just needs to be very clear. It's going to depend on the circumstances of the patient and why they feel it needs to be medically, why it's medically necessary to do it more frequently. So um, just make sure there's some type of blurb or statement on why it would be specific, um, why that patient would actually need that additional uh, frequency. Someone asked, what is the percentage of general surgeons to internists to podiatrists in this debridement code review? Unfortunately, I do not have that data. They do not provide that to me, so I'm not sure um, what specialties this in, entails. Um, so at this time, we, I do not have that information, and I'm not sure when they retrieve that data if they actually um, obtain that information. Um, with widespread or a service-specific review, um, this is actually anybody who um, can build these codes. Uh, so 
again, it could be anybody. So I'm not sure if they drilled down the data to that specific um, information. So I do not have that information. There's a question, if we wanted to review any denial due to prepayment review, do we call the medical review number listed on the prepayment review? I have tried calling and keep getting a busy signal. I have called the new provider number as well and cannot reach a rep either. Um, number one, if you're referring to this um, prepayment review um, that I just spoke of, um, yes, you can contact the PCC, the Provider Contact Center. Um, I'm not sure if you're having some issues. Um, it should, I haven't heard of any other issues with um, contacting the Provider Contact Center. Um, there is a nice chart. Well, number one, our Provider Contact Center is uh, 855 696-0705, and it's open from 8 to 4.30. Um, if you go out to our website, uh, there is a great tool under Browse by Topic, and it's called the IVR Information, and there is a article called Interactive Voice Response IV IVR Information, and there's a job aid on there and there's flow chart. If you go to the IVR flow chart, it will provide you with a chart that explains um, how you can proceed with asking your question. Um, so whatever it's pertaining to, um, you would follow those instructions. So I'm not sure why um, there may be some issues. Um, it may have been a fluke thing. I've not heard of any issues right now um, with the PCC phone line, but I would try that, that route. Um, now again, because your remit notice is how you're notified of your error and it's going to be probably state not medically necessary. Um, therefore, the only way to obtain that information is either wait until um, you receive the article, which was posted on our website, but again, that's not gonna be very specific uh, to your to your service. Um, so if you want more detailed information, you need to go out and um, you need to contact our PCC. And again, bear with me because we've got lots of questions here and I need to go through these. So there may be silence. Someone asked, what is the maximum unit for 11045 allowed to be billed? I'm not aware of a cap. Um, there may be, um, um, but I'm not aware of a cap on the maximum units for 11045. And you may want to to, now that I'm thinking about it, with the maximum units allowed, you may want to verify that on our website via our tool. Um, the next question is, we are orthopedic. Some of the coverage criteria seem more geared to ulcer wound care. We build the codes for open trauma wounds. Must all criteria be documented even when not applicable? If you are billing one of those CPT codes that are affiliated um, with this LCD, this local coverage determination, which I provided you with a chart of all the CPT codes affiliated with that, um, then yes, you must follow that policy. And again, we also have the article that provide you with more detailed information um, regarding the 11042 through the 11047.
Um, the, there was a question, how specific do you need to be describing the amount of blood loss after a debridement? It's typical to a surgery. Um, it, it's probably going to be minimal. I mean, it doesn't have to be in cc's, et cetera. Um, just defining how much, um, you know, just giving a general statement of blood loss is um, appropriate. If you give the pre-measurement pre and post-measurement, do you subtract the amounts? Um, no, you, they would actually measure pre, and then they would actually measure post. Um, I received m more of a statement about the frustration of um, not being informed of the debridement requirements before uh, the prepayment review, the service-specific review. Um, we've actually had our local coverage determination um, on our website, and uh, pro um, providers are responsible for um, following those guidelines. So that's something that was in place um, before um, these were these re re reviewed or initiated. We also created an article, um, and that is a requirement by CMS, an article that states um, what we would be looking for in the documentation. So providers are held responsible. Um, some of this, some of these guidelines um, from doing research online. Um, are very comparable and kind of 101 of, of documentation. Um, so there are other entities that have very similar uh, guidelines. Um, I'm also getting some frustration um, or questions and statements about um, the denials, and they can't figure out why the services were de denied. And that is um, right now an issue with our prepayment service-specific reviews is you're only going to receive a remit, and typically that states it's denied because of medical necessity. So um, number one, I always recommend double-checking um, the guidelines, so taking that documentation comparing it to our article and our guidelines in the LCD to, to determine what was missing, um, contacting our PCC, and if you're still frustrated, there's a form on our website, um, and that is, you can go up, I think it's on the left-hand side, yes, um, under top links, left-hand side, there's a form where you can request some education from our provider outreach and education team. Um, who can assist you if you're unable to determine, um, if you have quite a bit of denials and you need some education, uh, we can work with you. So you would complete one of those forms and you would fax it to the number that's included. I'm getting a lot of statements, and I know there's a lot of frustration um, I see with some of the guidelines and the requirements. Um, this one's related to blood loss, and you know, basically these are the requirements. Are when we create an LCD or local coverage determination that is created by Medical Affairs, um, which is physicians, and also they reach out to our carrier um, advisory committee which would be um, comprised of physicians and the specialties that would um, perform these types of services 
to get their feedback. Um, so they consult other providers um, in these specialties who deal with these types of services for feedback before they create these local coverage determinations. Um, so these LCDs. Um, so therefore, this, this is something that they have decided that these are requirements. Um, they have been published, they are published, um, and they must be followed. There are some questions that um, I'm not able to answer because um, they're kind of vague and I'm not sure what they actually mean. And uh, so I apologize if I didn't respond. I'm not responding to some of these. I'm getting a lot of a lot of uh, venting, excuse me, um, and frustration regarding um, the the requirements. Um, I'm not sure what this one means. Do you have a link to the prepayment tool? If they're referring, if you're referring to the prepayment article, um, you would go out to. Um, it's actually on the resource page. If you go to the Palmetto GBA website and you would go to Browse by Topic, so off on the left-hand side, you would go to the probe reviews, and that's where you would find the article, the surgical debridement services performed in outpatient hospital settings, place of service 22, service-specific targeted medical review. They would have their notice, and then they would also have the findings. Now, the notice is where they include a very detailed description of those specific documentation requirements. And I have a question here regarding billing the 97597 and 97598. Um, those can be billed by a physician, non-physician practitioner, a therapist. It can be incident to with a qualified registered nurse. Um, basically, that's when you're referring to your um, debridement of the epidermis and the dermis, um, and those those are the codes that would be related to that. And that would, would be associated with selective debridement. Um, again, I'm going to go through these. There's quite a bit of questions coming in, so um, bear with me. Someone asked when debriding multiple wounds with multiple level of debridement, like a sub-Q, um, um, subcutaneous um, muscle, bone, should I use modifier um, 59? Yes, that, fi that 59 modifier would come into play. Um, you, you would use that on um, that code. And I would refer out to NCCI um, for that. Um, and then also our modifier lookup tool, we have information regarding the 59. So in that case, um, from my understanding, you would build, apply that or append that to this um, subcutaneous and the muscle um, debridement.
Um, there's a question regarding billing E&M codes and debridement code for the same established wound. Um, if they are scheduled for an ulcer, a wound debridement, then an E&M would not be appropriate unless there's something separately identifiable, um, a service being provided, and then a modifier 25 would be appended. But if this is related and they're already there for, they're there for their wound care, then you would not bill an E&M service. And I'm getting some questions regarding um, the volume. The volume is related to the service dimension and the depth. So we, we would be looking for the surface dimension and the depth. When we submit claims, do notes need to go with the claim or wait for a request for notes? Um, you would wait for a request, so you would receive what's called an additional documentation request or an ADR letter. It would be very specific. It would tell you or explain to you exactly what beneficiary that we were requesting, the date of service, et cetera, and that's when you submit your documentation. That would be, um, you would have 30, 30 to 45 days to submit that documentation. Um, Try to stay within the 30-day 30, 30 limit. If not, um, when you get close to that 45 days, you risk the chance of a denial. Um, and that can be faxed to our medical review department. So all those instructions would be included on that additional documentation request. Very good questions. Um, just bear with me again. There's so many. I'm trying to go through all these. So um, I have a question related to selecting the appropriate CPT code for um, the debridement. And that's reported on the depth of the tissue that is removed and by the surface area of the wound. So you'll need to refer to your CPT code book. Um, and it's going to describe um, the depth of the tissue and um, the service area requirements. There was a question, can a certified wound nurse with training perform selective debridements 97597 and 97598 by a written order by a physician um, as a physical therapist can or only the 97602? From my understanding, yes, they can build the 97597 and the 97598, it's not they're actually billing it. The, the, it has to be incident two, so the incident two requirements must be met. So we're talking about direct supervision. That doesn't mean that they can be off in the hospital via phone call. It has to be they're in the office suite on that floor, not on a separate floor, et cetera. Um, the incident two guidelines need to be met. Um, and. In this situation, we have specific signature requirements for that too. Um, that would need to be signed, so that actual note, that wound care note would need to be signed by the provider who was supervising, which may not be the ordering provider, so the ordering physician. It may be um, someone else who's covering that day. So please keep that in mind. We do have an article on signatures, which, um, very, very important article, um, and that would be one of those you definitely want to go out and check out. Um, it's um, on our website, and if you do a search, actually, if you go to um, – bear with me here – Browse by Topic General, you will find the article. So it's Browse by Topic General, and it says it has an article, Medicare 
medical record signature requirements, acceptable and unacceptable practices. Again, bear with me. I'm going to go through some more of these. Do we charge for the size of the debrided ulcer bed or the size of the tissue removed? It's the, it's the depth of the tissue that is removed and the surface area of the wound is what that's related to. Um, the question, when billing multiple units of add-on codes, what would be the appropriate modifier for the additional CPT code add-ons? Um, that would be, um, there would be no modifier required. This is similar to a question that was asked or posed earlier. Um, that would be uh, the quantity build. So you would add your quantity build. Just remember, though, it has to do with the depth. So um, if there's more than one depth, so a, a different CPT code build, then you would, would be getting into some 59 modifiers. But at that point, if it is the same depth, same CPT code, um, and then you're adding the add-on code, um, then you would do quantity build. And again, I have some questions that are kind of vague and I'm not even sure what they mean, so I'm not able to read those aloud. So if I didn't get to your question, that may be why. Uh, most of our wound patients have multiple chronic illnesses that we have to address. Um, especially med changes and adjustment, even during the routine debridement visit. Is the office e &M appropriate in addition to the debridement CPT code with modifier 25? Um, yes, you know, again, as long as you're dealing with something separately identifiable from that debridement, that surgical procedure, um, then yes, you know, you would build the appropriate e &M code with a modifier 25. Um, if you are debriding two different wounds but it, to two different levels, for example, one to the bone and one to subcutaneous, would you use the 59 modifier for the two different procedures? Yes. And from my understanding, you would append the 59 modifier on the subcutaneous. Again, you can verify that through NCCI. And again, I'm getting follow-up questions regarding wound volume. Again, that's the surface dimension and the depth. There are some questions regarding billing specific CPT codes um, that are outside of this policy. Um, number one, it's, it's very difficult to explain about billing because they're giving scenarios. I would need specific, um, you know, I don't have the documentation in front of me. I can't explain or tell you how to bill those services. Um, so I've got several here that are 
um, different CPT codes that aren't related to the policy and asking if that is a code that you would bill um, for a specific procedure. Well, with Medicare, um, we have to be very careful. We have to make, you know, we would have to see the documentation. The documentation would have to support that CPT code. Um, and that is kind of outside of this topic today, uh, some of the questions I'm getting. Um, again, there's, I'm getting all kinds of different CPT codes unrelated to this, and I would need to, um, that would be things I would need to research anyways um, because they're not affiliated with this, this presentation. And I think, oh, bear with me, I'm checking to see if we have any new questions coming in. Here's a question regarding infected wound requiring debridement, cultures, antibiotic, um, when you use an E&M and debridement code in this case, or is this incorporated into the debridement code? You have to be very careful, again, um, if it's related to the debridement, um, an E&M wouldn't be appropriate. Um, there is an infection, and, and probably I would think a more detailed um, note, as in, um, a detailed, more uh, detailed history um, and examination that would probably warrant then the ENM. But again, it's going to depend on the documentation and supporting that yes, indeed, um, it was kind of the above and beyond of a typical debridement and um, that there was something basically separately identifiable. So it that could possibly be a use of E&M 25. However, again, it all boils down to documentation. Um, I received some comments about um, the web pages down at Palmetto GBA. Um, I'm not sure if that's the individual who's having issues because I'm actually in right now to the Palmetto GBA website. Um, so you may want to check back in a little bit. It may be an issue, an internal issue with your computer. Um, again, going back to the volume, um, you can simply state the surface dimension and the depth. Um, that is appropriate. We, someone asked regarding specific um, claims that were denied. Um, so some denials. Again, if you have anything related to denials, whether it has to be um, one service was paid but the other wasn't, um, then I would contact the PCC. Again, bear with me. I'm sorry. I'm going through uh, quite a few. Some of these are the same types of questions.
I have a question. What is a typical visit number to treat a wound? How many visits would be allowed? Uh, part of our LCD, our local coverage determination, um, they state that it um, if the debridement of chronic ulcers requires more than eight services to promote healing, the rationale medical necessity must be clearly documented in the re medical record. Again, that's a case by case. So it's going to depend on that individual. There may be um, comorbidities that affect that um, healing process, et cetera. Um, it just needs to be thoroughly documented on why they need to proceed with more than eight. If you do receive a denial based on frequency, um, that is something that you may appeal and you would just um, provide your supporting document documentation. You may want to write a little note uh, to explain um, a little letter to explain that um, why you exceeded. Um, they're asking if this webcast applies to specific places of service. Um, the bottom line is the LCD, the local coverage determination, um, is geared um, for any place of service that these, um, these CPT codes can be rendered. Now, obviously, uh, let me clarify too, the results I provided were related to the uh, place of service 22. And again, I have some questions that are unrelated to this policy or to this webcast, um, the CPT codes, et cetera, that I, um, I'm unable to respond to at this time um, since it's not affiliated with this webcast. Um, you may want to go out and do some further research on our Palmetto GBA website. I have a question relating related to that extension of debridement beyond the eight, and you know whether they have specific diagnoses. For example, the the diabetes or PVD, um, and can we just assume? I'd be very careful in those situations. We can't just assume um, that indeed it it is um, not healing um, appropriately, et cetera. Um, I would be very clear in your documentation um, why. So being specific that it's related to the diabetes, um, et cetera, providing that information um, that also is going to be supported in the description of that wound. Um, just to reiterate, the, the policy that I discussed, so those requirements, are related to any place of service, that LCD, that local coverage determination. The results that I provided were only related to one, uh, a review that we currently did for place of service 22. So um, that LCD, that local coverage determination, you must follow that policy for, for any place of service, um, again, the results were only pertaining to a review that we did for place of service 22. Someone asked about global days for debridement services and whether it's, um, and what that may be. You need to verify, from my understanding, some of them have a zero. and. If I'm not mistaken, some of them, I think the bone, bear with me here. Um, 
I think the 11044 and like your 11045, et cetera, um, and your 1043 may have a 10-day global. I am not sure about that. Um, I would go out and check that out on our website um, through the fee schedule. Um, you can check global days, et cetera. So I would verify um, whether that has global days. For, for my understanding, the, the lower CPT codes, the um, subcutaneous, um, does not is only a zero, um, but you would need to verify that. When billing multiple, when multiple 11042, so debridement of subcutaneous tissue, um, and I'm not sure I understand the question completely, so I'm going to kind of put it in my verbiage or in my uh, format. Um, when billing 11042 for multiple locations, you're going to add um, that um, surface area together. We know it's subcutaneous because um, they're, they're stating that they debrided the subcutaneous tissue, so we know we're billing the 11042. We then need to add up um, that surface area of that wound. Um, to determine then um, the appropriate um, or if an additional uh, codes can be billed, the add-on code. Again, bear with me. I'm going through to see if we have any. Additional questions? Again, I'm going through, sorry, there's quite a bit of questions here. Carrie, we have about two minutes left for questions. Okay, thank you. Um, I think at this time, we may have answered I know I'm still getting some questions about the 59, 59 modifier, and um, you know, basically, if a physician documents debridement to different levels at the same um, anatomical site, you report that deepest debridement, and then any of the different levels of debridement at the different anatomical sites, um, you would append that 59 modifier to the shallower debridement. So um, let's give an example here. Your 11042, the debridement of subcutaneous tissue, let's say you did that to your left arm, and then um, your left leg, there was 11, excuse me, 11043. You would put the 59 modifier on the 11042. Hope that helped um, those individuals with the 59 modifier. And at this time, um, it looks like I, I've got a lot of repetitive, um, repetitive questions that I may have already addressed just in a different, the questions just worded a little differently. Um, 
But at this time, I'm going to have to end our um, webcast. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for attending. I um, want to remind everybody to please uh, complete our survey. And our Palmetto GBA, GBA course number is 930707. And again, that is not affiliated with uh, the AAPC index number. Um, that is just for Palmetto GBA um, uh, internally. Thank you and have a great day, everyone.